And we are live. It is Tuesday night. It is eight o'clock. Do you do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable. Again, with some great DJs here. Uh, you know who they are. Uh, unfortunately, we have uh, we're down to DJ tonight. Uh, he has some business and uh, DJ Fire. I know he said he wanted to be here tonight. Uh, hopefully, he'll be here soon. Um, and uh, he gets in here and we'll have some fun uh, with his stuff because I know he always, always has products review and his uh, he always has some really great information. Um, oh, what's going on, Jim? How you doing? Welcome to DJ Roundtable. Uh, so, and Matt looks like Matt ran off somewhere, but you know, that Matt's got that cool picture right there for his background, with the lasers at uh, DMX. And I, I know I sent you guys a uh, question here from one of our YouTube um, watchers who watched the show and had a question. Um, and I will read the question. Here's a question for all of you. We know that strobe lights can cause adverse reactions in some people, but many still want strobe lights during open dancing. Or it, or if you are told a guest may have an adverse reaction to uh, strobe lights, but are requested to strobe away, how do you handle that? How do you negotiate uh, plays a role? Do you all have something in your contracts service agreements that waive your liability for anything that happens to a guest to strobe lights. So it is a, uh, is a question, Matt, because you do the most with lasers and uh, DMX. I'm going to start with you tonight. Cause uh, you're the, uh, you're right here. You're right now. You're the DMX expert. Yeah. And uh, uh, what do you feel with strobe lights? So I, I mean, I use them at every single event and I have something in my contract saying that they're going to be used and to let us know ahead of time, if, somebody who is epileptic or whatever. Um, but I haven't ha ever had an issue with that. We had one event where it was like a school dance. It wasn't like a school dance. It was like a, it was a, it was a dance gala for a school. I don't know what you want to call it, but anyway, a bunch of band guys. We'll call uh, it school band. dance. Yeah. A bunch of band geeks though. Cause it was for the band for the Rose parade. And, of course, that's the one place that somebody's going to be epileptic, and um, uh, well, that's stereotyping, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's just like proc. There were just there were there were too many. Um, what do you call it? Chaperones per se. There was like eighty chaperones for you know six hundred kids. Uh, so a decent sized crowd, but like we started playing, and they were like, "Oh, music's too loud, and we can't hear anybody talking," and blah 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 and make sure the music's this and oh, we have some kids that might have epilepsy so no strobe lights and they paid for a massive package mind you uh that their band director had like put together so i'm like well we can like kind of refrain from it but as soon as dancing started we just went crazy with it and kids loved it so uh kids wanted us back the parents did not um which was fine because they were just a nightmare to deal with um but that's the only time i've ever had somebody like say hey we can't use too many strobe lights um I don't like that's part of my show so like if you say no strobe lights and you probably booked the wrong dj because like we try to create a high energy environment i could leave the lights on just like a slow color fade or you know flash here and there or a little color progression but there's kind of kills the energy so we have it in our contract um nobody's ever really had an issue with it um because that's the other thing is if you're you should know what to expect if you're going to like, you know, a, a dance type of event that there's probably going to be strobe lights. So, you know, if you're epileptic, maybe it's not the best place or, you know, I, I, I if I was epileptic, I would hate to be the one to say, to tell the hosts like, oh, uh, I want to have fun at your wedding, but tell DJ not to use strobe lights, like just for one guest. Um, I don't know. That's, that's my two cents on it. I you can't stop the strobe lights. That's it, strobe, strobes are part of life. Uh, now lasers, lasers, I, I, lasers, I'm better with because I know they can blind. Well, mine can uh, blind people. So I always tell if anybody has any questions. Like we have a certified laser operator. I took a laser safety course and can operate them safely. Um, but I mean, they will strobe. And if you decide to throw your phone in the air and it happens to hit a laser beam, happens to hit your camera, like we're not liable for that. Like 
you know, we take, we take all safeguards to protect our equipment and the guests, uh, but we're not responsible if a guest is negligent. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things I, I think that um, as an owner of a business, you, you have to have uh, self-reliability. I, I get, I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV. I, I don't know the law. You know, I'm not preaching law here, but this is my personal, you know, thing. I feel that a person, if they're doing something that is out of the norm, then it's, there should be self or self responsibility, and they should be held responsible for their own actions, and it's not the actions of, of me. Um, I know that if a customer says, "Hey, I have someone who has a problem. Don't use strobe. I won't use a strobe light. You know, I make sure the strobe is off on stuff. Uh, the asteras I could do without the strobe. I could, you know, it could change colors and so forth, and still have a nice look. Or even the up lights I could do." So they don't strobe and stuff like that. So the flat, the, the the wash between the colors, the change between colors are a little bit more slower. So it, it's one of the things that I want to have a good feel without having that heavy strobe in people's eyes, um, and then ha- running the risk of someone having something. I, I, I've had people, you know, unfortunately, uh, get sick, but for other medical reasons, not with strobe. Like we had a grandma go down during dinner, and thank God she was okay. She wanted to take her medicine uh, because of dinner and stuff like that. And she was too excited. So she was okay. Um, I had, you know, people, you know, pass out, unfortunately, during, during ceremonies uh, from overheating. Um, and they were okay. You know, they, you know, there's always, uh, you know, people usually are, usually have medical knowledge. Uh, you know, I'm first aid certified. So uh, I didn't do anything to anyone, but uh I always look for someone who has more advanced, you know, care than I have. Uh, but the grandma going down, it was, you know, um, uh, one of the, uh, one of her daughters as a nurse, uh, RN. So she took care of it right away and, you know, grandma was okay. Um, just things like that have happened. Um, I've had people, you know, run into things and it's from them acting stupid. And it's like, oh God, you know. <laughs> and it's not, I didn't tell them to do it. They did it on their own thing. It's like, yeah, that's, 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 that's a dumb thing. You know, you bumped yourself, you hurt yourself. You got a little, a little cut and they're like, you know, oh yeah, I, I did, it's, it, I'm, it's, I'm stupid because of alcohol. And it's like, okay, you know, no big deal. You know, as long as you're, as long as you realize it's your own fault. And that, I think some of it, it's also personal responsibility. Again, like you said, if someone, if, if I know I have a problem with something, uh, like let, let's say peanuts and you go to uh, a restaurant that has, you know, they give peanut shells and they give peanuts to you. Uh, there's a couple of restaurants here that do that. They give you buckets of peanuts and has signs in there on the outside of the restaurant. You you have peanut allergies, please do not enter because <laughs> we have, we, we have peanut uh, shells in the floor. And if you are a peanut allergy, not sound bad. I don't want you in the restaurant because I don't want to see anything happen to you because I'm going to feel horrible, but also it's like, you know, you know, going into what's going to happen. And again, going to a wedding or a party, you got to kind of say that, yeah, this is, this stuff's going to happen. So it's kind of also some self, you know, regulation, you know, with yourself, with yourself, I'm going to use that term again, but self-regulation, you have to say, Hey, I, you know, I should not be going here. DJ Brantley, I know you do uh, not only just, you know, the weddings and stuff like that, but you also, you deal with clubs. What do you see? Will you do stuff? Well, for weddings, I, uh, one of the venues, actually three of the venues I'm at regularly make us keep liability insurance. So even though the venue has it, if we get sued for, and I, there was an article I read a little while back where the venue, bride and groom, DJ, and somebody else got sued because somebody got hurt at the wedding. So with that, I, I, I made sure to get a really good, you know, liability policy that's over what they wanted just in case. I'd rather play it safer than sorry. So with lights, I, I'm really lucky that a lot of the couples I work with, when we have, you know, our meeting before everything, you know, happens, I'll ask them those questions. Is there anybody you can think of that might be affected by this? If they even remotely say yes, I will say, do you want me to strip my lights down? And more often than not, if you see it, 90% of my gig logs, 
I'm only using the HO based slim parts more again. And that's because a lot of the couples are like, let's just play it safe. And it has a, in my opinion, I like it because it's a lot simpler and a lot classier of a look that if I really want to get moving and, you know, having everything change and go crazy, excuse me, I can do that in the record box app. Just click on my setting, click on strobe or whatever, and it'll do what I need during that part of the song if I really need to. And with that, yeah, I mean, those are just changing the settings within. Um, you have different modes that every light, you know, program has that's in or song has. So slow, medium, fast, and then you have a strobe setting. Then on that, you have like natural, cool, warm, vivid, hot, club one, club two. And I think there's one user option on there where you can really, but it's all programmed into the song itself and to the app. So I will talk to couples and make sure that there's nothing that would, you know, remotely interfere with anybody's good time. Because like you're saying, I saw it had to be at least an ambulance every couple of weeks from June of 2021 until March 2022. And a few of them, yeah, I was probably pushing my dance floor too hard. I won't lie. And like I've, I'm notorious for doing, I shouldn't be playing yet nine o'clock at night. I should hold off on that kind of a set until I get a little bit later out. Keeping that in mind now, after Midwest DJs Live last year, I really made a conscious effort and would get into myself, like arguments with myself about how I'm programming my set and how hard I'm pushing the group that's in front of me. But now there's been other instances, like you said, a grandpa fell out in the heat in a barn. It was 20 minutes after the ceremony. And being where we were, there was, it, it was 90 minutes to lacrosse to a real hospital. So the doc from down the way, as they put it, came in to check on the guy. They were now burning through cars waiting for an ambulance to show up because they had to keep air conditioning. So one get one car got down to like two gallons of gas. That's it. Let's get the next car up here, burn the next one off, so on and so forth. And then I seen it where guests do really stupid things. And it was right after first dances, the bride and groom, they were my age. However, their younger daughter, who I think is engaged now, and they've talked to me a couple of times about doing it, their one of her friends was there and did a face plant. Broke her nose, knocked out her front row. Ouch. Here's the issue now. We are 45 minutes. We're in Caledonia, Minnesota. 45 minutes from lacrosse on a good day. An ambulance to get there pretty much has to come from lacrosse or within a few miles of. They threw her in her dad's truck and just sped. I got to see her a few weeks, like, like a month, month and a half at one of the clubs I DJ at. And she was even joking about it. Hey, Al got fixed, got some plastic surgery here in my teeth, click, click, click. So she was taken in stride, but there's a lot of that, especially I saw it was more after 2020 when we reopened and it might've been just around Wisconsin and lacrosse, but be it the sociopolitical as, you know, atmosphere at the time, coupled with the need to get out and rage. I have never seen the likes of things I was seeing at weddings. It was getting like when venues are telling me to stop at 10 o'clock, uh, a groom is getting carted away on an ambulance at 1030 and we have the police there because he's taken something. Things were just going the wrong way near the end of 2021. And luckily things kind of cooled down. My daughter now drinks Gatorade Prime, if you're wondering. But I got the Gatorade GX bottle, yeah. <laughs> and then I got Prime today, yeah. But that was a big, and it was a big concern of mine actually. At, or a guest doing stupid stuff when a guest at one venue pulls it out of her. She's doing bumps on the dance floor. Someone knocks into her and it goes everywhere. Where me and my friend who I'm, tra I'm training is for I'll, I'll, cocaine all over the dance floor. All right. That the right there just. And I'm looking at her at the guy I'm training that night. He's like, Are you serious? I'm like, Yep. And we actually have to convince her not to get down on her hands and knees and start trying to get it up. She was so wasted. So did uh, did you guys had the facility call the police and have her escort out or? No, it was it was literally five minutes, like 10 minutes before I was supposed to call this call. The manager looks at me. She's like, call it. I'm like, all right, let's go. We're done. At that point. And then some of these same friends of hers. Of that party, there's a big helicopter, like a Vietnam era helicopter 
propped up outside the venue because I want to say it's the Legion in uh, La Crescent, Minnesota, who spot who put this venue together in conjunction with West Western Hotels. They have the helicopter out there. Three guys thought it was a great idea while it really, really wasted to try to climb up there. So trying to climb police. the top of a Huey helicopter. Yeah. You know, I'm mean, well, Huey, you know, that's out there as to show that, hey, this is for veterans. This is to celebrate and thank veterans for their yeah. service. Oh, but and it's finally last year it kind of tapered off. I only had one of those really bad, bad weddings. That were like that, and everything else was kind of tame after March. <laughs> wow, that is just you know again, it's it, it's 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 sometimes you know, it, it it's sometimes just crazy and scary sometimes what some of these people do. And oh yeah, as, as a business owner, again, uh, you know, I know I have I I pay more, I pay so much money in insurance, ain't funny. I never want to use it. I you know pay the money to the insurance company the extortion fee every single month. So here you go. Here's here's the money. Um, I never want to see you other than paying the bill and that's it. Um, it is, it's, it's just, some of these people just shake my, I shake my head at. So a couple things here, uh, DJ fire. Hey, I won't be on tonight. Last minute emergency. Uh, hopefully nothing serious there. Uh, uh Nathan, <coughs> um, again, we'll probably hopefully have you back here next week. And DJ Adrian E says, what's up gents. Uh, not what's much. Up, Adrian? What's going on? So, uh, <laughs> DJ cool thing, Hunter. What is your thought with strobes and your experience with strobes? Well, I I barely use strobes because I have wash lights and I usually put them on like sound active mode, or like on some type of automatic mode. I just let it be, and yeah, I don't really use strobes. Okay, so you you, uh, yeah, you if not, someone says don't I'm use strobes, you have don't have a problem with it, and no. I, I don't think any of us here have a problem with it. And Matt, you know, is very upfront. Says, "Hey, you have a problem with it? Tell me beforehand. I need to know so I could curtail and customize the look of the dance floor. I want the energy and what that feel. Like you should I... you shouldn't pay for my signature package, which has my thousand watt LED strobe lights in it. If we can't use strobe lights, so I like to have people tell me that ahead of time." So I could be like, okay, well, instead of that, we'll add some extra sparklers or we'll do some LED foam sticks or we'll do this or we'll do that. Like, I don't like seeing my clients waste money. So I want them to no, get no. what they paid for. And that's, the, that's a key thing there. I think the other part of this is uh, which, he, which, which he brought up is the communication with these customers and us as professionals asking these customers, Hey, uh, is there anything special I need to know? You know, it, it, like, again, you have your contract, but do you also just talk to people you when know, you're talking to them and you're explaining to them everything, you know, uh, and showing pictures and video of your events. Hey, you know what? Uh, you're getting my top package. I have all these lasers. I have these strobes. Is, is anybody having any problems with anything? And, you know, again, someone put up a, a phone case, you know, throwing their phone up there and <laughs> it reflects off the phone and burns their eye out. Um, hopefully not using that powerful lasers. It's not like, you know, Star Wars here, you know. I don't you know, use that you know, kind of stuff. Nothing, nothing hurt. But, you know, it, again, if, if it's uh, burns out the lens of a camera or something like that, you know, again, it, it, that's that's on the person. And I know that you do your lasers, you actually foc you focus them upwards away from everyone, not down to people's faces and eyes, because that would be bad, especially the powerful lasers you use. But to me, again, it's it's a mayor, as an owner, a manager is also asking questions and trying to do due diligence. And uh, I know, <laughs> Bradley, uh, you, you're you're uh, one with the lady with the uh, illegal narcotics onto the dance floor. Um, oh. Here, this it, it's just you just gotta shake your head at it and go, wow. And I, oh. I'm sure. Over the years, uh, I have not seen it, uh, but I'm sure some idiot somewhere has done something they should not have done at one of the ways I've done. I just, I don't know, uh, oh, didn't oh, see yeah. it. It was an out, outside out of mind kind of thing, I guess. Uh, but I know uh, facility managers have told me about people going into restrooms and doing uh, the whoopee and <laughs> going into restrooms and you know, just relieving themselves in the wrong vessel, to put it that way. Uh, and not just number one, number two. Uh, I don't know if the, all the stalls were filled and they couldn't make it and they just 
<laughs> saw something to relieve themselves in and said, hey, the sink looks great or the garbage can looks great or whatever. You're, you're in, I'll throw uh, it out there. You're in lacrosse. If it's open, you're going. I'm not kidding. Oh, the things I've seen. And when you're saying, you know, they go to the bathroom, get it on. Oh, no. I've walked <laughs> into stairwells adjacent to dance floors. I've seen it going on. A guy getting s- something performed at a table during the reception. I mean, the, the list. Ju- and my, one of my friends is like, you should do DJ Tales, dude. You have seen so much crap in lacrosse alone. You could fill up at least a calendar year of stories. And I was going talking to somebody who I'm training. I'm like, you can go back and look at every wedding you've done, and something's going to stick out. Look at a picture from that wedding, and you will remember one point. And it might be that the wedding that you played every banger known to mankind, and they just stood there, didn't even bop their heads. Yeah, I've I've had that. We've oh, all had those weddings that. that yeah, and you, I don't. I couldn't believe all the things I've seen when I did weddings parties. They tend to over drink. They um, go to the bar too much. They have way too much to drink. And there was one guy with a with his shirt halfway off and showing his belly and his yeah, it, it was pretty bad. Yeah, that, that's and of course we, a fight broke out at my last wedding at my cousin's wedding and <sighs> yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> at the very end of the wedding, there was a fight broke out at the wedding because they got too much to drink. You know, it's it's one of the things that. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I know it varies from state to state for as laws and rules and regulations and how every state does things. I know here in Illinois, uh, it's not too strict, but it is more strict than some states like Wisconsin. The beer taps are open much wider than they are down here. Oh, yeah. Uh, especially. Oh, yeah. Um, and I don't know how it is in California yeah. and in South Carolina. But yeah. the thing is that I, I feel also the bartenders that are running the bar need to look at people but with so many people and i'm not trying to sound bad here but we've seen it in a lot of facilities i'm sure you guys seen it tracy and i've seen it a lot of times they have one or two bartenders they have a 200 person wedding one or two bartenders you have a long line of people and they're just giving out drinks they're not looking at anything they're just trying to give out drinks because they're trying to catch up and then people who have too much get turned away they had someone else go up to the bar and the bartender's not looking around because they're just look what's in front of them. They're trying to do their job and they just get, you know, these people come up there and drink, 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 drink. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. And it just, sometimes I feel um, that, you know, there should be the manager of the facility. There should be other people looking at, looking for people who are and tell them, you know, keep an eye on this person, make sure that someone else doesn't come up and grab alcohol for yeah. this girl or this guy or you know whoever yeah. it is yeah. and let's cut them off now or just give them all water and I, i've heard tricks from a lot of good bartenders and again uh, brightly you 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 do stuff at, at nightclubs uh yeah. matt i know you, you you do stuff all the time um hunter i don't know if i'm, I'm sure you've probably seen it too but I, I, a lot of your good bartenders will start ramping up the water level in a drink uh-huh. and ramping down the alcohol yeah. oh yeah and make the Thank drink you. sweeter Add more sweetener to it, add more Coke to it, add more whatever to it, and put almost no alcohol or no alcohol whatsoever to drink and give them, you know, they say rum and Coke and they already know they're wasted. They basically get a glass of Coke, a Coke with some water in it, (laughs) and they're they're drinking it and they think they're great, you know. See, with that trick, my dad, you know, owning a bar while I was growing up, me bar, I mean, literally bartending or DJing half my life, there's other tricks to fake them. You pour a, like a little bit of a splash <laughs> from the bottom so they taste it when it gets there. And you pour a little bit of rum on top of the straw while you're finishing it off. It makes it look pretty for them like they're getting a lot, but they're actually getting next to nothing and thinking they are. It's great. But yeah. Yeah, those are the you, people you need, you need to cut off. You don't want to, and again, just like just like Matt said, you don't want to shortchange a customer for services. You don't want to shortchange a customer for alcohol. But if someone's already liberated, um during the wedding and you don't want to add to that you need to you know cut them off you want them to enjoy themselves and have enjoy the celebration but we don't want to have someone incapacitated at the same time which oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you know matt i know in california uh yeah especially, um, when they, yes, especially when they come up to me the dj and they ask me to play songs and they get way too close to my face and they are just wasted <laughs> 
They put your arm, they put their arm around you and they're like hugging you like you're my yeah. best friend ever. <laughs> yeah. Basically the bartender the bartender's hair are probably super chill and way bad. <laughs> and it's just I think it's just constant alcohol for the entire night. I don't think there's a limit. <laughs> I mean, one thing I will do, especially more, like any gig I'm at, but I'm really more conscientious about it at weddings because weddings you don't really unless you're in illinois which i caught the last few times i've been there wisconsin weddings we don't have a security staff on hand you got a couple of bartenders <laughs> you know you've got the bar back servers no, manager but there's no security staff on hand. with that i will if i start seeing people doing things they shouldn't do like Turning a dance floor to a slip and slide with beer. I'm gonna go tell the I'm gonna go tell the venue manager. I'll be like, yo, you may want to get over here. If things are getting broken, things are getting out of hand. The first thing I'm doing is backing off when I'm playing because I'm slowing the tempo down. Things are going the wrong way here. What and you should do, this is what you should do. This is what I do. And I would recommend you doing this. Stop. And you put it back upon them. You, I, you know, I always tell people beginning when I open a dance floor up. Please do not bring any glasses onto the dance floor. We don't want you sliding over the dance floor. We want, might want you to do the electric slide, not the slip and slide. We don't want glass on there because a lot of people take their shoes off. And as soon as someone drops a glass and shatters a glass, I will stop the music. <laughs> and when I stop the music, people look at me and go, what's going on? There's glass, there's water on the floor. We need to stop it. We need to make sure everyone's safe. I don't want no one slipping and falling. I feel that right there throws it back on that person that did it, make them kind of feel bad a little bit, which again, it's their fault. But I really do feel that, you know, that, that extra safety precaution is important. Matt, out in California, um, and again, you do a lot of outdoor venues and I, I, you know, a lot of your weddings are outdoor. Um, do you see out in California and how they do things is there a lot more, is there a lot of drinking or is it more, people are more drinking hard liquor or they're drinking more beers or they're drinking more wine? What are usually more drinking out there? Definitely. Uh, we have wine country here. So wine, I mean, they drink everything. I mean, the weddings, I DJ, like people are there to have a good time. So like the bars are always slammed. People are always drinking. Uh, I've never really had too many like I've had like one fight, but not in this area that was up in the countryside. Um, so different crowd, but I don't know. I don't, most of the weddings, uh, if, if it's at somewhere that's not like with lodging close by or like in the city, then like there's usually shuttles. So they'll shuttle everybody back to whatever the hotel is that they bought a block of rooms for. Uh, otherwise people just take Ubers or lifts or whatever, but, um, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, I the thing with the dance floor, like I've only ever asked like a venue asked me once to tell people not to bring drinks on the dance floor. And I'm like, people are going to do that regardless of if I tell them. And so he like he came up like two or three times and I was just like, it's, like, it's not my job. I mean, I'll tell them, but like they're not going to listen to me. <laughs> I'm not going to well, stop it, the music. Like, it, go, it, go, it goes back to the liability. And that's right. that's one of the things my. They just I didn't want their floors getting messed up. They didn't, I don't think they cared about the glass. They just didn't want their floor. Like they had this oh, beautiful yeah. marble floor that they, uh, in the middle of the, they used as a dance floor. And it was like pristine and beautiful. And that was just uh, like, you also got to think like, if you're having a rowdy crowd, maybe not use glass, use acrylic. I, I don't know. Um, I've had, I don't know. I, a lot of, I don't know. Yeah, uh, people are uh, a lot of cocktails. We have a lot of those like craft cocktail bar type of people that come in on trailers or, you know, converted VW buses or it's all about this like farmhouse chic thing where it's like fancy mixology cocktails. Um, and then, of course, I've done weddings where it's, you know, just your simple well drinks and, and beer and wine. Um, so. Yeah, uh, barn, yeah, barn weddings are really, really popular here in the South because we got a lot of barns. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever had anybody drop a ton of cocaine on the floor though. That's a, that's an interesting one. That sounds like a, <laughs> sounds like a Wisconsin. Uh, oh, we, type right. Of thing. Uh, here, but it's yes. okay. It's okay at Wisconsin weddings though, and it's kind of the norm to serve in plastic. 
Yeah. Like we'll go to like once dinner is wrapping up, all the glassware gets pulled in. And at that point, they start switching over to the plastic stuff. Yeah. As they and should. so it, it it does save a lot of headaches, except for that one lady who keeps her wine glass at her table, goes to get the plastic cup and then dumps it into her glass cup. Yeah. That's it's like there's that really nice venue that you'll see on my story a bunch, uh, Ole Hansen. It's in San Clemente. It's gorgeous venue, super expensive. And uh, yeah, same thing for dinner. Everything's in glassware, but the bars, everything from the bars is plastic because uh, it's a wood dan- it's a wooden room where they dance and they know <coughs> that somebody's going to drop something. And uh, I think it, al- it also comes back to it's such an open space of a venue that they could bring in the company that owns it is also the catering company. And so like they could opt for super fancy special glasses or goblets. But for the bar, I think it's like standard that you serve in plastic there. Um I, I, we just got a comment from Adrian E. He said, new movie, Cocaine Bride. <laughs> <laughs> like Cocaine Bear. <laughs> I want to see Cocaine Bear. It looks good. I mean, I, I love oh, it, that is, I've heard it just like I, it. I, I know the story behind it. Uh, there's actually a couple of good uh, videos on YouTube about the real story. And again, you get to look at it still. It's someone telling a story and all the facts may not be there. But if you can get, say it, it's 60% correct. It's not like the movie. The movie is basically based on a story about a bear, but again, it, it's 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 Hollywood, so you have to look at it, you know that it's a Hollywood movie. It's not fact. Um, bears jumping through, the, you know, flying through the air, go, jumping in ambulances and attacking people, and you know, uh, but I'm sure you know there are bears who do attack humans and <laughs> people do dumb things. But it, it, this is this is one of the things that you know I, I feel that again taking an extra step or two and say, asking people, please don't bring drinks onto the floor. And then, you know, if I have to stop the the, the, the music, I, I want Aaron to say a caution. My insurance company is going to say, Hey, you know what? You Aaron to say a caution. You, you do diligence. Again, I don't want to be on the other end of a lawsuit. So I'm about to take a second or two that two or three minutes. There's no music or anything that going on because staff to come out and wipe out. Again, the person who did it feels like an idiot. They usually get made fun of. Um, and they don't do they don't bring another uh, drink on the floor, and a lot of times it doesn't happen the rest of the night. So I much rather do that for a second or two, and then start back up, and then jump right into a you know a banger, and get back mm-hmm. on a dance floor and get them out there. Or it gives you a good thing to go into like cha cha slide or something like that if you want to do something like that. But it, it's I just feel that you know taking that second or two to do, it's not a horrible thing. So. The yes, no question for tonight, which uh, I've been doing this for the past couple of weeks. And you, you guys watching out there either on YouTube or on uh, Twitch, tell me if you like this yes, no question I asked the, the panel. And again, it's not a gotcha question. It's a yes, no question what they want to do for their business. And the yes, no question for today is, um, we were talking a little before, Pioneer just released a new mixer uh i'm sure they got other equipment up their sleeve i'm not going to look into rumors or stuff like that uh, i'm sure they met, probably have equipment for you know, controls and stuff like that and probably probably enhancements down the road for their software for uh um for record box and i'm sure pioneers always working on stuff because they want to be a cutting edge company but there's other great companies out there too you know denon and uh rain and so forth and so on so my question to you, and I know Hunter, he just got a new controller not too long ago. I'm still going to ask him, this year, and again, it's, it's a yes or no thing. If you're not doing it, no big deal. This year, are you looking to get a new controller, mixer, or something else that you're looking forward to coming out hopefully soon? And again, NAM is in April. Um so it is coming up very quickly, and Marquee Show is going to be here in Chicago in June. So a lot of releases coming up and stuff. So Hunter, I'm going to start with you. I know again, you got you got your controller, you got your uh, your oh, yeah, uh, mixed pro. Yep, you got yeah, your mixed yeah. pro. But are you looking to get another controller? Yes or no? No, not anytime soon. I don't have the money or the time to get one. Okay. Especially with the prices being the way they are. Yeah, the price price right now for DJ Gear is is up there so it's it's not like it's you know was two years ago mm-hmm. three years ago stuff has gone up even my xz uh when i got it, i got it for 2200 it's out 2500 yeah. 
for the I'm same exact thing. Get, yeah, I'm actually working on getting my SR2 fixed pretty soon. Like get the power uh, port fixed. Okay, cool, cool. So, Brentley, what about you? Are you going to oh, yeah. get anything? As soon as that uh, FLX 1000 comes out, be it, you know, end of this year, early next year, it is on the top of my buy list now. I'm, I mean, the other part of it was because the new uh, mixer, the A2, the A2, I think it is. Yeah. Is going to become, even Nick Spinelli said it today, it's going to become the industry standard. And I would bet the, the club that I'm going back to in a couple of weeks here in lacrosse is going to upgrade their rig to that. And seeing all the bells and whistles it has, I'm, I would even be interested in getting that in a pair of CDJs. So yeah, I'm willing outside my toad booth, which has been ordered. I do have to put a new deck in that thing so I don't have to tear it all apart every time. So my hopefully I'll just put my 1,000 in there and that the Flex DDJ Flex 1000 will be out. Okay. But that's because it does have stems and all that. So that's even, yeah. <coughs> cool. And then, Matt, I know you are you love your controller because there's software you love. You have yeah, everything mapped really out cool. exactly the way you want it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how you people... For a new controller. No, I don't know how you people use Pioneer controllers. They are so bizarre and foreign. I like the Rain controller when I, the only time I've, so I've played with the Rain 1, Rain 7, Rain 12. I don't know what the heck it is. The 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 big one, the new one that was all the hype last oh, year. Okay, okay. Yeah, Um, I love that thing. That was like workflow wise, it makes sense. Pioneer, the way that those effects are with that weird little knob to turn, I, I, I don't know how people use Pioneer controllers. I don't like them. I love um, my Pioneer controllers. My I, SR2 is like almost four or five years old. It's, nah, I, it's it's more so like, I mean, I don't like the way they do effects. I like the way that my software handles effects and it does a much easier job of being able to layer multiple effects at once. And, and it's a full MIDI controller. So like the software is MIDI mappable. So I could in theory use any controller with my software I just like the one I have, which is similar to your SR2. It's basically, you know, same more or less layout. Um, but uh, no, I mean, I I just dove in and, and bought the the audio guest book. So we're launching that um, sometime next week. Uh, Going to build a separate website and whatnot for the photo booth with the guest books. And so about that, uh, my lasers, I'm I, in the I process. Think Matt I think Matt, you're talking about the Rain Four because we just got things that I want the Rain Four, and I think that's the one you're talking about the with the actual spinning platters. Yeah, that one. That it's was kind of like you know, almost like yeah. two, uh, uh, two, uh, yeah. two uh, regular record players. You know, two. Uh, I, I was able to. Two's. I was able to do some cool stuff with that, but I mean, I just I like my software too much over Serato. There's just little things that Serato doesn't do that. Like if I had to use Serato, I wouldn't be able to control my lights and run them as efficiently as I do. Uh, wall DJing so um but no I mean all my purchases have been made I just got um all my lights from China so I just got those big ones that were on my story I got 10 more up lights so now I've got 30 uh, I got some more of my wireless hex cars in white so uh, I found a metal shop that actually uh, was able to widen the holes because from China they use different measurements and uh your standard clamp uh 10 millimeter thing wouldn't fit in there. So I had a guy um, fix those. So oh, okay. all the purchases are done. Um, now we're just uh, launching, I guess. Everything else is done though. Um, no controllers, so, no, no so, more audio. So here, here's one of the things, I know your software, you love your software. And I, again, people like I, I have Pioneer, I've had Denon. I still have some Denon gear. Uh, I haven't used it in a while. Um, we all like what we like. And that's, 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 that's why there's all different stuff, you know. <laughs> Everybody's a different DJ, everyone's different software. We have, you know, Hunter who runs e almost everything, you know, except for Tractor and the software you use, Matt, because uh, he uses he uses Record Box, he uses, you know, Serato, he uses Virtual DJ. I use Virtual DJ. We have a Record Box DJ. We we have Serato DJs on here. Uh, we have, you know, DJs who use, you know, um, who just stream. Torque 2.0. You you like you like your torque. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't have stems, which I I, I wish they would kept up on. It would give you stems because stems are cool to play with. Oh yeah. Uh, but the thing is that you know 
we we all have to use what we what we like, and that's why there's different manufacturers out there. But here's one of the things that you know, like for me, uh, for a new controller, I'm gonna say no because I just got the XZ, and again, that <laughs> wasn't cheap, <laughs> and I, I, I might get I might uh, replace the little Hercules controller I use here for uh, streaming on, on, on here on Twitch. <laughs> Um, they were DJing that, but the little Hercules controller, the $99 little Hercules controller, I, again, I've used that for cocktail hours. Nice little controller for $99. And, you know, it, you, people are very quick to poo-poo it, but it, it, it's actually not a bad control. Now, is it as, as accurate as a Denon, as accurate as a Rain, as accurate as a Pioneer, as accurate as the bigger the bigger ones? No, it, it gets a $99 controller. You got to look what it is. But even for $99, it's actually not a bad little controller and it's a headphone jack out. So it's not, you know, not RCA, it's not XLR, but it's a USB powered, very basic, very, very small little controller. And I've used it for cocktail hour when I have multiple setups. I've used it uh, for a ceremony um, because again, it's self-contained. It's easy to deal with, uh, you know, headphone jack to a uh, X, uh, XLR plug right into a speaker boom and done and over with and it, it it's it's done pretty well and, and that's not bad i've had people you know enjoy themselves with music with it so I, i'm not worried about it but i don't i don't know how you mix co- it's so foreign to me to hear djs mix during cocktail hour unstoppable does that too and i'm just like it's, 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 it's beat matching just you know putting music in there and make yeah. sure you have that nice nice I, rhythm cocktail and hours, Cocktail hour is my chill time. Cocktail hour and dinner is my chill time. I throw on my Spotify mix and I'm I'm out of there. Like I I I minimal work as minimal work as possible mixing until it's time to actually mix. That's just, I do I, I do everything my, live. I I I just believe that. Oh, yeah. Props to you, but I I, 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 I I guess I I guess because I'm I'm old school and I did it on turntables and when I you know when I first learned how to DJ and uh, you know uh, <laughs> and techniques. And with turntables and stuff like that, it just, I, I just enjoy it. And I, I look at, I, I, I want to read to people and see what they're doing at cocktail and dinner to see what I'm going to do for the dance floor. And that's, that to me is have to be out. Spotify, again, if you, if you want to, you know, basically do Netflix and chill <laughs> for it with uh-huh. Spotify, that, that's, I have no problem with that. People want to do that. You, and I like, it's a tool in the toolbox. Uh, me, again, it, it's, it's like, why do you have a Tahoe and I have an F350 or why do I have a, why have a sprinter for my business? You have you use your towel. It's what you feel is best for you. And again, there's no right or wrong answer here. And I want you guys to understand that out there. We're we're not arguing one bit. It's just you know, Matt looks at a certain way. Hunter looks at a certain way. You know, Nathan looks at a certain way. Brentley looks at a certain way. Everybody looks at things differently. And it's not one person's right or wrong. It's just a different way of doing it. And no one's to say anyone's right or wrong. And it's just what you have to you feel what's best for you. And how you want to run your business, and you know I respect Matt, and I know how good of a DJ he is because again, if you watch his gig logs, and I would recommend you if you have not done so already, make sure you go to all their YouTube channels. You go to DJ Cool Thing Entertainment. You go to DJ Brentley. You go to DJ Salsas. You go to DJ Fire. You go to my channel. You go to all the channels on YouTube, and you click subscribe, like, comment, everything on everything they do. That to me is important, but you watch the videos of them doing stuff. I can tell you who has talent and I've seen everyone here who is on the show. They have talent. I've seen them have people dancing. I've seen them mix. I've heard their mixes what they put on YouTube. Again, YouTube, you can't put too much on it because you get copyright strikes and so forth. But I've heard how they transition, how they've done things. And I can tell you everyone here is worth their weight in mixing. And that is because the fact that, you know, again, we're real world DJs. We're not someone who hasn't, doesn't, doesn't, hasn't DJed in a day in their life or a DJ short time. We've been doing it for quite a while, some more than others, but we all, you know, have put our work into it. And it, it's, it's one of the things that, you know, what everyone does and stuff like that, there's, there's, it, it's just, it's just fun to hear how people do things, how they solve problems. And, you know, like before, I like to watch people dance a little bit. I've had, I had a wedding last year at the Tealy Park Convention Center. Uh, the bride was talking to her and she goes, 
uh, you know, I got to tell you, someone came into the bridal suite during cocktail hour and said, this wedding's lit. People are out there dancing and, and, and uh, during cocktail. And they were, they were out there. You know, I was doing about 110 BPM, 115, and people were out there just, you know, swinging away and dancing. It was you know, almost 200, 250 people, you know, and they, I, I probably, probably 60, 70 people out there dance a little bit because it's all like, you know, 80, 90, early 2000 groove. And they're just eating it up like candy. And, you know, and they're like, wow, wow. It was no bangers, but it was all like stuff like, yeah, this has got a great groove and it's just a great feel. And people are like, you know, hey, you know, this is, this, it sets that mood. And that's one of the things that, you know, I like to do. But again, everyone does things differently. So what, I got to look what time it is. It's okay. We have a few more minutes. By the way, uh, I, <laughs> oh. Um, Thank you. He voted for you today. Wow. The best of lacrosse county 2023. It ends today. And, and like every year, I've won it two years in a row. And my joke has been, or my ongoing thing, if I win, I will pick a night, buy the beer, DJ, like whatever money I'm supposed to make DJing, I will buy beer with and just give it away until it's gone. Okay. So last year I did a Driftless Arcade, the year before I did a Driftless Arcade. This year I might do two nights, one at Driftless and one at Animal House, because Animal House has been my, kind of my home, away from home when it comes to gigging since, God, it's been a year and a half almost now. So by rights, I would really like to do that there. And everybody who's been coming out to my nights, they're here. Drink for free, drink on me, have fun. That's cool. Well, unfortunately, you're a little bit of a, of a drive for me. And considering I don't drink, I would just be asking for Coke or Pepsi, whatever they have there. I'd be like, hey, I, I just want Coke. No, no, no alcohol in it whatsoever. <laughs> just Coke. <laughs> uh, I don't drink it. And see, people think I'm this huge party animal. It's like, if you ever look at my DJ booth, it's got energy drinks and iced tea. That's it. I mean, I, I, I get wired on caffeine, and then I will stay up when I get home from a gig, look, review my set, listen to it, and maybe mix a little bit more. All right. here, here We're going to do this a lightning round again. One more lightning round, and this is going to be a fun one. What is your go-to drink for energy? You know, uh, my thing is, it has been, was Monster Green, which I love. I switched to Monster Zero Sugar, which is 10 calories. It tastes similar to the green, so it has that same flavor with no sugar. But that is like my drink. I usually have one of those earlier before everything starts just to make sure I keep myself going. That is like my air drink. Other than that, I drink water. I drink, you know, pop, Coke, Pepsi. Uh, and I usually, Tracy, I bring these insulated, uh, they're 40-ounce uh, metal uh uh, metal jugs uh we got off amazon that we fill up with water and i add in one of many flavors but this is uh, you guys can't see it too much but a little flavoring this is orange crush of this one i have grape i have cherry there's one from kool-aid so those are my drinks so hunter i know i have seen you a few times going to, to uh over to uh dunkin donuts is that your oh, yeah. energy drink for you have before you go to a gig oh. or what's your energy drink oh uh, for a gig i mostly drink like water and gatorade but i do drink some soda some diet sodas and coffee okay you have a coffee what, what what's your what's your passion coffee at uh dunkin just a or regular with, <laughs> uh, just a regular with cream and splenda splenda and cream do you, you which you like more, Duncan or or Starbucks? <laughs> There's a battle right there. <laughs> Duncan sucks. Duncan is awful. I don't know how they. Yeah, I kind of like both. I like Star both. I like my dad. My dad loved Duncan. He liked Duncan more than Starbucks. It's like you guys, it's like <laughs> you start a battle with this right here. <laughs> you guys have a, a Phil's have coffee out there. I just had one before we started the show. Here you go. <laughs> I got I got I got sugar free Red Bull here. Uh, Monster uh, sugar free red monster. Ooh, sugar free uh, Red Bull. So uh, Matt, what's what's your what's your uh, poison of choice that you like to drink beforehand? Um, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I have ADHD, so caffeine doesn't do anything for me. Energy drinks don't do anything. No, um, no, nothing. So I mean, I. I like coffee. Like I, I have a cup of coffee every morning, um, loaded with, uh, 
the best creamer you can i like the crazy creamers so i i go to walmart um i don't shop at walmart because walmart's walmart but uh mm -hmm. you do have like their own special brand of creamers from great value and they have speculoos and they have like a all, all these other ones that you don't find in like international delight or or coffee mate or whatever so those i like my cup of coffee but i love coffee mate and international delight i love those too yeah um but i don't great. know i usually like I mean, I'll have a like a Red Bull or something. I, I like to drink a soda if I'm mixing, but I mean, yeah, nothing, no, nothing like keeps me up. If I'm tired, I'm tired. But that's why I try to get some good sleep before a gig. And uh, yeah, we have a we have a coffee shop here. I don't know if you guys have um, Bill's Coffee. No. Yeah, it's like a like a very like LGBT run coffee chain here in California. I think they're all over the place, but um, they're they they have phenomenal coffee they just have really weird combos like they have a a uh, a mint mocha that's like a it's it's like a hint of mint mixed with like a sweet mocha oh it's delicious um my wife would like but, that she like uh, the starbucks she likes the one from starbucks and she yeah, actually my, likes from 7-eleven the uh pre-mixed powder uh really? she gets like the french vanilla one she likes my, that you know if my new year's resolution was coffee. to never was to never spend another dime at Starbucks again. And I've so far stayed true to that. Um because okay. I hate again, you want you want to support 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 yeah. the business that you support. They're, I mean they're they the prices that they charge for for what you get, the fact that it's all ice half the time and you're just like I, I would maybe consider a, a hot drink from there, but like my girlfriend gets uh, the 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 acai refresher. It's literally water and strawberry powder and whatever else they put in their lemonade and it's like five bucks and it's just like I, I i don't know so brettley what about you what, what is your what are your drinks well i generally every day of the week i'll put the by 7 8 a.m or you know when i'm getting the kid going to school i've got my first pot of coffee down yeah. and when it comes to like wedding days or for example because my club versus wedding schedule gets really kind of upside down taxing i'm getting a three hour nap drinking a pot of coffee as soon as i get to the venue i'm cracking some kind of energy drink it's usually rain because they have some pretty good flavors orange dreamsicle cherry limeade are my two favorites uh worst case i'm always down for a sugar uh sugar-free red bull and once we get to like if i'm at a wedding i will stop really uh, you know slamming down the energy drinks around eight or nine o'clock but I want to be kind of jacked up for my set once the real dances start to go. So, because, you know, you've just sat like every other guest through dinner, this, that, and the other, your energy level is going to be similar to theirs and you need to be way up here. So right around the middle of dinner, I'm literally slamming one of my energy drinks and getting ready to start getting the night going. And then from there, I'll have a couple bottles of water with me. And a couple of sodas, just if I feel like I'm dropping off a little, I'll drop some Diet Coke down or something like that. Oh, man, you said soda. So you you lose your Chicago card now. You can't have any Chicago food. Uh, that's one of the things Adrian E. Uh, actually called you out, Hunter. Uh, in Chicago, it's Diet Pop. We call it Pop here. So uh -huh. Adrian's, Adrian's like just teasing you a little bit. And then uh, foreigners. <laughs> we also got things that I'm with Matt on this one. It does do anything for me, but I like the flavor. So that can, he's a sugar free Red Bull for him. Um, and I know Red Bull's got like they got blueberry, they got a couple flavors. I see I watermelon. I want to try it. I haven't I haven't tried the blueberry one because I like blueberry stuff. But um I, I, I buy for, actually from Amazon, I buy the uh <laughs> monster uh zero case. It's like 36 bucks for 24 cans, and they ship it to me. Um right to the house and it's like okay once a month i order one because I'll, I'll drink you know one here one there and i don't try and drink more than one in a day but it, it's I, again it's one of the things that i like that little little kick but i've also fallen asleep after drinking a monster so <laughs> i've never i've never had an energy drink i don't no. think i want to start oh you no, should again it's, it's, uh, oh. you have coffee that has a stimulant caffeine but again you, yeah. jo you enjoy your coffee that's the important thing and Matt, uh, Matt's got his coffee place he has. 
but you know, everybody's got everybody's got their favorite thing. And it, it, again, there's there's no again, this is one of the things no right or wrong answer. It, it's it's a fun thing to ask. Every has their uh, their secret sauce or their secret uh, doings and how to do things. And it's it's an amazing thing, you know. Especially we're trying to, you know, we'll make sure we're there for a long time. I know here with a six hour reception, you're there at least two or three hours ahead of time, a half hour, forty five minutes after. So it, it drags out to be a 10, 11, 12 hour day, depending on how far you're driving and so forth and so on. So it, it's just one of the things you need to make sure you get plenty of rest, plenty of sleep. Uh, you need to make sure that you have you you know eat. You got to make sure you drink, uh, keep yourself hydrated. Um, the other thing also is that, you know, I think a lot of DJs and I, I, I know I'm, I have been guilty of this is that I get excited for the gig and I just think about all the, what, what will happen, not bad things, but what will happen, how I go through things and, and have that flow in my head. And I just, you know, I just want to make sure that everything is done right. T's cross, I's die before I leave. So. With that said there, um, I'm going to ask one more really quick question of uh, a couple people here. Uh, first thing first, uh, if you guys are watching stuff like that, make sure you're watching. If you're watching on Twitch, make sure you go to YouTube and watch the uh, replay on YouTube. Um, it helps the algorithm on over on YouTube. The other thing also I'm going to ask you guys to do, if you uh, can do me a favor, make sure you smash a like button over on YouTube. Again, it helps the algorithm. But if you're watching here on Twitch, make sure you're subscribed to this and follow us on Twitch. Again, the live questions, you see I'm doing it live right here. If you're watching this on YouTube, come over on Twitch. And the water's fine. You can jump in and <laughs> ask questions live. But again, if you see this on YouTube, you have a question, put down your critiques, comments, criticisms, and please smash that like button. It helps out the channel a lot. But the one really quick thing, uh, really quickly, uh, does anyone here, anyone here, um, have more than 20 bookings for this year i uh i probably win i've got 64 64 okay i have like four or five right now okay yeah. you got four or five what about you uh brentley i think i'm almost to, uh, i think i'm gonna hit 80 weddings this year and i'm probably gonna wind up doing god 52 50 nights at animal house plus all any uh, any off day like you know thread i'll probably want i'm close to 250 gigs again this year well we know who's, who's buying and dinner when he comes out of chicago <laughs> this is how many this is how many weddings i have no. well we gotta change that for you hunter we got we got we got we gotta change that for you we got we gotta figure out you know help you out you gotta get one of your friends get married or something like that that you know some of you know that you know I'm you're comfortable with yeah i'm waiting patiently for for uh one of my friends to well, yeah. we're, we're, we're hoping for you, man. We're pulling for you. And again, we always got your back. So again, I want to thank everyone here in the table tonight. Again, thank you guys all for coming in tonight. Thank you all for watching it live here. And thank you all. And again, uh, like I said before, you can see we're real DJs. And by the way, right now, as I sit here, I have just in March alone, three gigs. Uh, I have probably right now I have 20, 22 contracts but it will add up very quickly some more very quickly um and i got stuff for 2024 as well and some re requests for 2025 so uh we'll talk about more about that next time about how far are you seeing stuff out so there's there's a question for next week for you guys how far are you seeing bookings coming out so that'll be next week's question so no answers today uh but we'll see you guys later thank you guys all for watching on twitch See ya. See ya. Peace.